In this video, we're going to take a look at the steps to create an analytics campaign. This feature is available with a premium or enterprise subscription. We will first title our campaign and input our amount of subscribers. This number here will determine many of your statistics, such as percentage of opens and percentage of clicks. We can set the time zone and read time thresholds. These numbers here will categorize your opens into read, skim, and delete based on how long the email was open for. This next step here is adding a merge tag. This is an optional step, but merge tags are used to gather data on an individual level. To be able to do this, we need a unique value to tie that data to. Other names for merge tags are substitution strings, personalization fields, or personalization tags. Every ESP has their own different merge tag, and you can use the drop down here to find the ESP that you're using. You can also use the custom option or none if you do not want to include a merge tag. If you do include a merge tag, you'll be able to download a CSV file containing in depth campaign data. This would include user agent, IP address, geographic location, and more. The last option here is click tracking. Opting into this will add special tracking to all of your links so that we can track how many times they are being visited. If I create my campaign without click tracking, the next step is just generating my tracking code. Now that I have this here, I'm going to need to input this myself and paste it right before the closing body tag in my HTML. Now, if I create a campaign that does include click tracking, the steps will look slightly different. It will ask me to provide my HTML, so I'll paste that here. If you're already using Google Analytics, you can opt into this and our link tracking will work seamlessly with your current reporting. Now, when I click Create Tracking Code, the tool will actually add that tracking in there for you. You won't need to make any manual edits. All you'll need to do now is take this updated HTML back to your ESP for the final send. It's important to make sure that this updated HTML is not changed in any way upon send, as that can alter our ability to effectively collect the data. When your campaign is first created, it will be in test mode until you manually activate it. You can use this time to send the campaign to yourself if needed, or run some preview tests in our campaign pre-check or email testing tools. Once you're ready to activate the campaign, all data collected during test mode will be deleted. If you happen to reach 500 opens during test mode, that will automatically activate the campaign. Before activating the campaign, you'll be prompted to double check your links and set a completion date. The completion date will always default to 30 days out, but you can push that as far out if needed. Throughout the course of your campaign, the completion date can always be pushed out further if needed, but a campaign that has ended will not be able to be reactivated. Over here in the top right corner, we have the option to edit our campaign. This will just allow us to change the name and the subscriber count. If I have a merge tag included in my campaign, I can download the CSV file with the data here. I can view my tracking code at any time, as well as generate a link to be able to share my campaign with others. Now we'll take a look at what the dashboard looks like with some real data. The summary page will display condensed versions of each of these categories. We've got engagement, geolocation, click tracking, heat map, and email clients. Right here, we see our percentages based off of our total subscriber count that we set when we first created the campaign. Here is where we see our breakdown of opens that were counted as read, skim, or delete. We've got our geolocation map, 
most popular email clients and most popular links. And then lastly, we've got our heat map, which is basically a visual representation of what links are being clicked the most throughout the email template. 